Being that Eddie Murphy is one of my favorite childhood actors and I've grown up watching all of his movies, I couldn't miss watching Beverly Hills Cop Axel Foley right when it dropped on Netflix. And yes, I like Eddie Murphy enough to rewatch Pluto Nash, even I Spy, and God, you can't go wrong with The Haunted Mansion or even Trading Places. So, <laughs> I think I'm more than qualified. I'm more than qualified to talk about this newest movie. Oh yeah. The absolute best way to do it is to show you the pro and cons list. Cause man, those pros and cons lists do pretty well. I like that. And that way we can get a conversation going about if we agree or disagree and maybe engagement farm a little. If you wanna be upset about anything, then jump right to the cons list and we can have an internet argument about it. The chase in Detroit starts this off. It's the very beginning of the movie and it sets up the expectations and then knocks them out of the park. Up. Yeah, far. First with the pro of the action packed opening. I swear every single movie from the Beverly Hills Cop opens up something like this and it's a thrilling chase in Detroit and you can't miss it. While attending a Red Wings game, Axel finds that he is correct in his assumptions and the locker room is being heisted or hoisted, hoisted up. No, it's being heisted, sorry. Uh, which does grab your attention right from the very beginning. Axel Foley or Eddie Murphy always has the characteristic humor and chaotic style that is on display in most of his movies, which he does an easy job of setting a fun and familiar tone for fans of all series. But buddy, he is definitely in trouble. I mean, every single movie, he's, he's wrecking thousands, if not millions of dollars. I don't know, he still has a job, even after the first, second, or third movie. The writers and producers, and hell, even the director, do some damn good work at character writing at the very beginning, efficiently reintroducing the key characters. I mean, look, it's been nearly 40 years, and it feels like we haven't missed a beat. Ultimately, they do a wonderful, they do a wonderful job. Wonderful job providing context, continuity that we need. The plot setup is pretty damn good if you ask me and the initial sequence establishes the main conflict very, very clearly. It's Axel's motivation to reconnect with his daughter Jane, which does create an emotional hook that we kind of want to see fulfilled, right? The high stakes and damage caused during the chase scenes set a stake that is super high, like a vampire stake from a chest. Okay, with the police commissioner putting pressure on Jeffrey, hinting at a larger consequences and challenges ahead. And that about does it for the pros. I know it was short, it was sweet, but let's get into the juicy meat and potatoes, which is the cons. I know I just said it, but the over the top damage, especially with the chase scenes, it's a double edged sword. It's beautiful to watch, you can't look away. Here, it's really costly damage that is caused by Axel, and it's definitely feeling like it's a little exaggerated, okay? And uh, almost on purpose for the movie watcher. I don't necessarily think it strains the credibility for the viewers. It's the world that Axel fully lives in. I mean, come on. Which is, ironically enough, the same world that I think Billy Madison lives in. This is private property. We, have, we got a little problem back here. Uh, somebody still trapped in a helicopter. I'd love to help you guys, seriously, I would, but... Uh... Listen, you put me in a pretty tight place here, legally speaking. One of the biggest cons I had in this movie was actually the shift between the transition from Detroit. I think they say it like that. I, I don't know. I'm not going to try again. The Detroit setting to the suggestion of reconnecting with Jane. Jane? Uh, it feels 100% rushed. And honestly, it really doesn't fit Axel Foley's personality or MO, really. He's not one to give up on family. Obviously, we can't control what others do, so the wife win her way. Okay, whatever. But his current life and struggles just don't seem par for his actions, at least in the, what we see in the movies. He seems like a good guy, a good father. I'm also a big fan of George... Uh, can't even say the name, I like him. I like him, I can't even say his name. Which brings me to my third con. It's upsetting to see the limited new character development at the beginning, which focuses heavily on action and existing characters, really, while offering very limited introduction to the development of new characters. And listen, before you go into the comment section saying, oh, well, you said that it was nice and that, you know, they established the characters well. Okay, I get it. It's just not that our beloved actors from the 90s are not gonna be here forever and we need someone to take those torches. I don't care much to see Jane at first. I mean, she's not a cop. It's a cop movie, okay. But she does pull her own weight. It also really upsets me that she changed her last name away from Foley. Come on, how could you do that to Pops? And now we have Detective Bobby, who, <laughs> however, 
has some hilarious weaknesses, including his inability to fly a helicopter correctly. So the limited time we get is 100% fun. The predictability of the movie can be seen as a con sometimes. I mean, hell, you can see it from a mile away. It's the setup of actually being pressured to reconnect with his daughter, and it can easily come across as predictable plot device, but it is what you get with a Beverly Hills Cop movie. This is the blueprint for Beverly Hills Cop. It's Axel Foley in Detroit wrecking shit up, and then he calls, he gets a call from Eric Carl's a friend, and he heads to Beverly Hills. He messes it up there, nobody likes him, then everybody likes him because he solves the case, he sells, saves everybody. It's simple, but predictability is there. Lastly, there is a potential for confusion for some viewers who might not have watched or cared to watch the first, second, or third Beverly Hills Cop movies, which honestly, I highly doubt. It's the rapid reintroduction of the characters and the relationship that comes off as slightly rushed, but all in all, I think the context is there to fill in the gaps. Beverly Hills Cop Axel Foley. I am giving this movie a 7 out of 10, and let me know what you think in the comments below if you enjoy these buddy cop movies. In fact, if you do, then I think you wouldn't go wrong by watching my video on Bad Boys 2. It's definitely worth rewatching.